In late 2025, satellite images revealed something extraordinary at the Zhangnan shipyard near Shanghai, China's fourth aircraft carrier and its first nuclear-powered one. With no smokestacks, it's clear, a nuclear reactor powers this ship, a capability once exclusive to the US and France. Tentatively named Type 004, it's estimated at 120,000 tons, the largest warship ever built. More than a ship, it's a floating symbol of China's ambition. The era of unchallenged American naval supremacy may be ending. The shadows have parted, a new titan of the seas has emerged. To grasp the significance of China's new vessel, we must understand what makes a supercarrier. An aircraft carrier is a floating airbase, projecting power thousands of miles from home. Supercarriers, displacing over 75,000 tons, are the largest and most capable, true queens, on the global chessboard. What sets them apart is nuclear power. Most carriers burn marine fuel and need frequent refueling, limiting their range and creating vulnerabilities. Nuclear-powered supercarriers, like the US Navy's, and now China's Type 004 can operate for decades without refueling. This gives them virtually unlimited range and endurance, able to appear anywhere in the world's oceans with little warning. The only real limit is resupplying food and munitions for the crew. This freedom transforms a carrier from a regional asset into a global one. Nuclear carriers are flexible, powerful tools of foreign policy, able to rapidly redeploy across oceans. Until now this capability was almost exclusively American. China's entry into this elite club is a profound strategic shift. The game has changed. Details about the Type 004 remain secret, but satellite imagery and expert analysis reveal a formidable warship. Its massive size allows it to carry the world's largest air wing, advanced stealth fighters, electronic warfare planes, and anti-submarine helicopters. More aircraft mean more sorties, greater combat power, and stronger defense for its strike group. Nuclear reactors at its core generate immense electricity, powering advanced systems like electromagnetic catapults. These catapults enable smoother, more efficient aircraft launches, maximizing the carrier's air power. The ship's power reserves also open the door for future technologies, lasers, railguns, and other directed energy weapons. While not confirmed at launch, the Type 004 is built to accommodate these systems, future-proofing it for decades. Beyond hardware, it's a floating command center, with advanced sensors and communications to coordinate complex operations. The Type 004 is not just bigger, it's a generational leap, combining size, range, and technology for global reach. It's a nerve center for projecting Chinese power. This is China's flagship for a new era. The Dragon's wingspan now stretches across the seas. For decades, the US Navy's nuclear supercarriers, especially the Gerald R. Ford class, have set the global standard. The Type 004 is projected to be even larger, 120,000 tons versus the Ford's 100,000. This extra space means more aircraft, fuel, and munitions, enabling longer, more intense operations. Both ships feature nuclear propulsion and electromagnetic catapults, placing them at the cutting edge of carrier design. However, the US Navy has decades of experience operating nuclear carriers. While China is just beginning this journey, the Ford's air wing includes proven fighters like the F-35C and E-2D Hawkeye. China is developing its own, including the J-35 stealth fighter. The skill of pilots and the maturity of carrier operations will be decisive in any conflict. The US still leads in operational expertise, but China is closing the gap rapidly. Carriers never operate alone, their effectiveness depends on the destroyers, cruisers, and submarines that protect them. The US Navy's global network and integration are unmatched, but China is building its support fleet at record speed. The Type 004 may be the world's largest carrier, but its true power will depend on the fleet around it. The race for naval supremacy is on. The story of these giants is still being written, the balance at sea is shifting. The Type 04 is the most visible symbol of China's military expansion, but it's just one piece of a much larger puzzle. The plan aims to field six carriers by 2035, with nine planned, an unprecedented buildup. China's shipbuilding industry is now the world's largest, producing advanced warships at an astonishing rate. This expansion is backed by a formidable missile arsenal, including carrier killers like the DF-26 and DF-27 designed to threaten large naval vessels from over a thousand miles away. The strategy, make it too risky for US forces to intervene, especially around Taiwan. 
China is also building a global network of bases, from Djibouti to Cambodia, and exploring dozens more worldwide. This network will allow its Blue Water Navy to operate far from home, mirroring the U.S. global posture. Alongside this, China is rapidly expanding its nuclear arsenal, on track to exceed 1,000 warheads by 2030. New delivery systems and early warning capabilities are in development. This holistic modernization, naval, missile, and nuclear, signals China's intent to become a true peer competitor to the U.S. The Type 004 is the flagship of this grand strategy. The world is watching. The arrival of a nuclear-powered Chinese supercarrier rearranges the global chessboard. For decades, U.S. carriers have guaranteed freedom of navigation and responded to crises worldwide. Now China's Type 004 challenges this reality, signaling a new era of great power competition. China's primary military goal, develop the capability to fight and win a war on Taiwan by 2027. The new carrier could enforce blockades, launch strikes, and intercept U.S. forces in a crisis. Beyond Taiwan, it enables China to protect global economic interests and project power worldwide. A global navy, with nuclear carriers at its core, is the classic playbook of rising powers. The presence of rival carrier groups in contested waters raises the risk of miscalculation and escalation. The Type 004 is not just a military asset, it's a political statement. China is now a global player. The stakes are higher, the world more complex. The future of naval power is being decided now. The construction of a warship in a distant shipyard may seem remote, but its impact is global. For over 70 years, U.S. naval power has underpinned the free flow of commerce, vital for the global economy. Over 80% of world trade travels by sea. Disruptions could trigger shortages, price hikes, and instability. The rise of a competing naval power introduces new uncertainty to these lifelines. A standoff in a choke point like the South China Sea could ripple through supply chains worldwide. This shift could also fuel regional arms races as nations feel compelled to boost military spending. Resources may be diverted from social needs to defense, creating a classic security dilemma. The emergence of the Type 004 signals the end of uncontested American primacy and the start of a new era of competition. Careful diplomacy and strong alliances will be needed to manage this transition peacefully. The fate of a single ship is now tied to questions of war, peace, and prosperity for all. The balance of power at sea shapes the balance of our lives. This distant ship matters to us all.